Welcome to the Raised with Jesus podcast, a biblically Lutheran podcast for Toledo and beyond. You've got today's Bible reading, looking at a portion from 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the command of God our Savior and Christ Jesus our hope. To Timothy, my true child in the faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. As I urged you while I was going to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus so that you may command certain men not to teach any different doctrines or pay any attention to myths and endless genealogies that bring about aimless speculations rather than God's plan, which centers on faith. The goal of this command is love that comes from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith. By veering away from these things, some have turned aside into meaningless talk. They want to be teachers of the law, although they do not comprehend what they are saying or the things they so strongly affirm. Now we know that the law is good as long as one uses it correctly, keeping in mind that the law is not laid down for a righteous person, but for lawless and rebellious people, for godless people and sinners, for unholy and worldly people, for those who kill their fathers and those who kill their mothers, for murderers, for sexually immoral people, for homosexuals, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and for whatever else is opposed to sound teaching, in keeping with the glorious gospel of the blessed God with which I was entrusted. I give thanks to the one who empowered me, namely Christ Jesus our Lord, that he treated me as trustworthy, appointing me into his ministry. He did this, even though formerly I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a violent man. But I was shown mercy, because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. The grace of our Lord overflowed on me along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and worthy of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But I was shown mercy for this reason, that in me, the worst sinner, Christ Jesus might demonstrate his unlimited patience as an example for those who are going to believe in him, resulting in eternal life. Now to the King eternal, to the immortal, invisible, only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. I am entrusting this instruction to you, Timothy, my child, according to the prophecies about you which were made earlier, so that by them you may fight the good fight with faith and a good conscience. By rejecting these, some people have suffered shipwreck with regard to their faith, including Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I handed over to Satan, that they might be taught not to blaspheme. This is the word of our God. With these words, Paul launches into a strong encouragement to this young man that he has been leading and mentoring and teaching um, over the last 15 years. Uh, as he writes to Timothy, his his young son in the common faith, as he refers to him elsewhere, Timothy was that young man that um, that Paul met during his first missionary journey, whose father was a Greek and whose mother was a was a Jewish believer. And Timothy has been working with the Apostle Paul for quite some time, has been his traveling companion, he's been his you know right hand man, his most trusted person that he leaves behind somewhere or sends somewhere when Paul can't make it there himself. And so in this first letter to Timothy, um, Paul speaks very strongly with uh, with instructions about what he has left Timothy to do. Uh, verse three. Remain in Ephesus so that you may command certain men not to teach any different doctrines or pay attention to myth and myths and endless genealogies that bring about aimless speculation rather than God's plan which centers on faith. And just the idea that Paul, Paul says, you know, Timothy, not everything is beneficial. It might be interesting. It might tickle the intellect. It, uh, it also might be a straight-up lie, and it might divert you, divert your attention entirely from the work of Jesus Christ and from the person and work of Jesus Christ. And, you know, that happens every year, every Christmas, you know, somebody runs some sort of a special about, you know, when did this really happen as though there was some great conspiracy about Christmas landing in December at this time of the year and somebody trying to unpack all of the actual details. Every now and then you hear about some someone saying that, you know, Christmas or Easter is actually a pagan holiday that's been reclothed in biblical Christian garb. And all of that is just hogwash. And that's what 
Paul is talking about here, not just those ideas, but even, even many more and others that are even more preposterous than those. He says, don't pay attention to those things and authoritatively command certain men not to teach these different doctrines, these false teachings that has as an issue of authority to say that this is, this is harmful to your spiritual life here and now. And Paul says, you know what, the, the reaction and the result of people who hold on to these different teachings and these non-biblical teachings, they want to be teachers of the law, they want to be a leader, they've turned aside into meaningless talk, and they've given up on the Word of God. And so Paul says, you know, you've got a point, you've got a purpose, you've got a reason to be here, which is to point people to Jesus Christ. And as Paul begins this letter to Timothy, um, he really focuses on that one main idea. Verse 15 is, um, is that center core, verses 14 and 15, I guess, together. The grace of our Lord overflowed on me along with the faith and the love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and worthy of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. And with that statement, Paul gives us a peek into his pastoral heart. Paul gives us a glimpse into the grace of God in his own life, that he was somebody who knew where he stood with God. He was somebody who knew how grievously he had offended God and sinned against God by sinning against his neighbor and by persecuting his Christians. And Paul says, you know what? But all that... All that has been washed away in the blood of Jesus, that in the example of Paul, we see God's great love for sinners, that even somebody who is so ardently opposed to Jesus Christ has been turned around and brought into service to that same Jesus Christ. And so, verse 16, I was shown mercy for this reason, that in me, the worst sinner, Christ Jesus might demonstrate his unlimited patience as an example for those who are going to believe in him, resulting in eternal life. The patience of our Lord means your salvation. The patience of our Lord means that you have life together with Jesus today and forever. And so when Paul sits down to write to Timothy, he wants to keep that as the main focus That he says, yes, God's law has a place. God's commands, God's injunctions, God's saying of do this and do not do that. It is still, you know, God's law is still a holy thing. It's still a blessed thing. And it's still something that is useful for the Christian life. But the Christian life centers on the gospel of who you are in Christ Jesus. That your sin does not define you. That what you have done and left undone is not who you are that the sin you have committed against God and against your neighbor is not the real you. The real you has been washed in the blood of Christ, and so you are new. And so when Paul says to Timothy, um, speak strongly to, to speak against those who are, you know, promoting false teaching and false doctrine, be sure to rebuke them, rebuke them publicly. He's not saying that just to simply um, shame somebody who is opposed to him but to guard the truth of the gospel that Timothy is supposed to be there guarding, be there sharing. And so Paul's words to Timothy here at the end of this chapter, um, beginning in verse 17, really, really are for us as well. Now to the King eternal, to the immortal, invisible, only God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That the work that we do isn't about us, that the message we proclaim isn't about us. It's about God's glory. It's about Jesus for us, that we, we talk about, you know, maybe he, even here Paul talks about his past sin in an effort to highlight the grace of God in Jesus Christ. And, and he encourages Timothy to speak strongly about the true doctrine, not as some personal attack or personal defense or anything like that, but so that the grace of God and the glory of God would be defended and the grace of God would come to many more. And so that's exactly what he's talking about um, at the end of verse 18 into verse 19, so that you may fight the good fight with faith and a good conscience. Fighting this good fight means holding on to the truth of God as revealed in Holy Scripture. 
Fighting the good fight means recognizing our sin and recognizing Jesus as our only Savior from that sin. And Jesus committed you to that fight at your baptism. And so, as you go about your day, just take a moment to thank God for having brought you on to the winning side of this fight And thank God for the opportunity to continue to serve him in that fight as long as you have breath on this side of heaven. That fight and that fighting the good fight um, might look fairly simple, fairly normal. It might look like opening your Bible on your own. It might look like um, just speaking with a friend or a co-worker and talking about forgiveness of sins through Jesus alone. It might be talking about the promise of heaven. It might be, you know, meeting together in a small group, whatever it may be. Find your place and take up this fight because you know that the glory of God as revealed in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is for you. That Jesus has forgiven your sin and he wants that message of forgiveness brought to many others. You can find us Wednesday evening. We have Thanksgiving evening worship and at 7 p.m. and Sunday morning 9 a.m. worship at 2250 South Hollandsylvania Road in Maumee. And be sure to check us out on Instagram. Give us a follow at Raise with Jesus. God bless your day.